Hey everyone, welcome to our real interview experience series. As you know, we share our subscribers interview experience here. Recently, I have shared Hassan's Qureshi's co-founder interview experience, right? I'll add the link of that video and his LinkedIn profile in the description. And now I'm going to share his Infosys technical interview experience, what he shared with me. And guys, if you have attended any interview recently, then fill the form below in the description. We will reach out to you. You can choose to share your name or share your interview experience anonymously. We are also giving gift cards to the participants. So don't miss out and don't forget to subscribe to catch more videos like this one. So now let's get started. So guys, basically he applied through LinkedIn for a role open for three to six years of experience and he's having total 3.2 years of experience. So in interview after the introduction and project discussion, interviewer asked about functional interfaces in Java. This is very important concept for interviews. So basically functional interfaces in Java are interfaces with exactly one abstract method. They enable Lambda expressions and method references making code concise and functional style. Okay. Then he asked if you are designing a custom operation to be passed to multiple utility methods, how can a functional interface help and how would you use a lambda here? This is a tricky question, so understand carefully. So if we want to pass a custom operations like addition, filtering to multiple methods, we can use a functional interface, right? Because it lets us pass behavior as a parameter like a function and in Java 8 plus we can use a lambda expressions to write the behavior in one short line instead of creating a whole new class. Okay, got it. Then interviewer asks about the role of the predicate function and consumer in Java 8. Guys, Java 8 is very important topic. Please learn each and everything. Now let's go to the answer. So in Java 8 predicate test a conditions and returns a boolean function takes input and returns a result consumer performs an action without returning anything okay guys an interviewer asks about the different states of a thread in java 90 percent interviewers ask this question please listen very carefully so a java thread can be in new runnable blocked waiting timed waiting or terminated states representing its life cycle from creation and execution to completion or suspension due to synchronization or resource waits okay then he asks if you are writing a file from multiple threads simultaneously what synchronization techniques can you apply to ensure thread safe behavior this is interviewer's favorite question so to ensure thread safe file writing we should use synchronized blocks reentrant log from java.util.concurrent classes guys whole multi-threading topic itself is interviewer's favorite topic for experience guys so please learn this topic thoroughly before moving ahead guys i would like to share one important thing with you actually we had launched complete interview preparation kit so let me tell you this kit has basically four main part first is complete interview preparation material it is a step-by-step -step material made by me expert in mnc's interviewers 99 percent of the questions asked in the interviews are covered in it second is two real enterprise client projects where code and video recorded sessions are there and you can add these in your Resume. third is lifetime chat support here you can ask your doubts anytime fourth is referral support here we help you get referred to the top mncs so basically the material is organized as per your experience level and covers java spring boot spring security spring data jpa kafka microservices maven gate coding questions stream api coding questions and many more you can buy just the complete interpretation material or the full kit with projects supports and referrals i have added the links in the description below so now moving to our interview okay then interviewer asks about a deadlock how can you avoid it again this is very important question so basically a deadlock occurs when two or more threads wait forever for each other's logged resources we can avoid it by using acquiring logs in a fixed order if we could use try log with timeout and minimize synchronized log scopes okay then they ask about a race condition and how can it be prevented so a race condition basically occurs when multiple threads modified share data simultaneously causing unpredictable results we can prevent it by using synchronized log or atomic classes from java.util.concurrent package okay then he asks how does garbage collection work in java to be honest 90 percent interviewers ask this question so garbage collection in java automatically removes unused objects from heap memory it identifies unreachable objects and reclaims their memory preventing leaks and improving performance common collectors include serial parallel cms and g1 garbage collector okay then he asks if you notice gc is taking up significant time in production how would you analyze gc logs and tune the jvm for better performance 
this is actually a scenario based question so let's understand so basically we can enable and analyze gc logs by using jvm flags like x log or tools like gc easy and visual vm we can tune performance by adjusting heap size gc type and generation based on memory usage pattern okay then they ask what are transient fields in java guys i observe most of the candidates don't know about this field in interviews so this is very simple thing transient fields in java are not serialized during object serialization they are marked with the transient keyword to skip saving sensitive or temporary data when writing objects to streams preserving security and reducing storage okay then they ask if you mark a field as a transient in serializable class what happens when the object is deserialized and how do you handle restoring that field this is a tricky one listen carefully so when deserialize transient fields are not restored and get their default values we can reinitialize them manually using read object or post deserialization logic okay then he has a difference between eager and lazy initialization in spring very very important question for experienced guys so eager initialization creates spring bean at startup while lazy initialization delays bean creation until needed improving startup performance and resource efficiency okay then they ask in a large application startup time is slow how would you optimize bean loading and using lazy initialization 99% interviewers ask this question this is very famous one so basically we can enable lazy initialization globally or per bean by using lazy annotation bean or when needed to speed up startup okay then he ask about bean annotation and how it is different from component annotation i also observe one thing when i take interviews candidates know the advanced concepts but don't know what bean is so guys first learn the basics then go to the advanced now let's understand what bean is so bean annotation defines a spring bean within a configuration classes manually giving full control over creation whereas component auto detects bean via class path scanning requiring less configuration but offering less customization okay then they ask if you have a third party class you cannot annotate with the component how can you register it as a bean and spring this is a tricky one so we can register a third party class as a bean by using bean annotation method inside a configuration class returning its instance this allows spring to manage it without needing to modify or annotate the original class okay then they ask the role of value annotation and configuration property annotation in spring boot 90% interviewers ask this question so basically in spring boot value annotation inject single property value directly from configuration files whereas configuration properties binds a group of related properties into a pojo promoting cleaner structured and maintainable configuration management okay then they ask about dtos and why are they used this is simple question so dtos stand for data transfer object are simple pojos used to transfer data between layers they reduce coupling improving performance by carrying only required fields and prevent exposing internal entity structures in apis or services then he asks if your controller is exposing entity objects directly to the clients what risk does this have and how do dtos solve that problem very interesting so basically exposing entities directly risk leaking sensitive fields and creating tight coupling with the database structure dto solve this by exposing only required safe fields and maintaining separations between internal modules and external api contracts then they ask how does exception handle work in spring boot rest apis this is going to be most important question for your next interview so in spring boot rest apis exceptions are handled by using rest control annotation and exception handler annotation which catches error globally and written meaningful full standardized http responses it improves api readability and client communication then they ask if you want to return custom error message with http status code for specific exceptions how would you implement centralized exception handling very very important question so we can implement centralized exception handling using by controller advice and exception handler method as i already told you these methods catch specific exceptions build custom error responses with meaningful messages and http status codes then they ask about hetios in rest so hetios 
stands for hypermedia as the engine of application state it adds links inside rest responses guiding clients on available next actions dynamically it makes api more discoverable self descriptive and reduces dependency on hard coded endpoints okay then they ask if you are designing a rest api for a product catalog how would you use hetios to improve client interaction with your api so we could use Hetios to include the links like view details, update products or add to cart within products responses. This helps clients navigate the API dynamically without hard coding URLs, improving usability and discoverability. Okay. Then they ask the difference between request param, path variable and request body annotations. This is also a very important question guys. Listen carefully. So request parameter annotation extracts query parameter path variable annotation captures values from the url path and request body binds the entire request json to a java object typically used for post or put operations okay then he asks if you are designing a rest endpoint to update user profile details which annotations would you use for each of these user id query parameters and json body so for updating user profiles we should use path variable for the user id request parameter for optional query parameters and request body for the json body containing updated user details ensuring clear separations of data sources in the request then they ask how does caching work in spring boot so in spring boot caching stored methods results using annotations like cacheable cache put and cache evict basically this is a default caching mechanism it reduces repeated competitions or databases caused by serving data from memory improving applications performance and response time then they ask how do you handle pagination in spring data jpa so in spring data jpa pagination is handled by using pageable and page interfaces we pass a page request with page number and size to repository methods which returns paginated results automatically with a total count and metadata then interviewer asks about circuit breaker pattern have you used resilience 4j or hystrix again very important question so the circuit breaker pattern prevents cascading failures by stopping calls to a failing service temporarily resilience 4j or hystrix implement it by monitoring failures and automatically recovering once the service becomes healthy again then they ask if your API depends on an external service that occasionally fails, so what will you do? So we should use a circuit breaker like Resilience Forge to detect failures and open the circuit preventing repeated calls until recovery. This avoids overloading the systems and improve resilience. And in the end, he asked basically two coding questions. First was write to program to sum of a list by using a stream. The second was to print first non-repeating number from a list by using streams. So I'll provide the solution links of these questions in the description below. So guys, this is all about Hassan's interview experience at Infosys. Please make sure to check the interview preparation kit. Thank you.